Hey everybody, it's Grace. Welcome to my living room where I have books and plants and pillows, um, tea, swallowtail tea, uh, Arabian kismet, my favorite. Um, but anyway, I'm reporting to you from this place because this morning I was at headquarters where I did, I, I made a brew tutorial with the um, Stag XF Brewer and the EKG Stag Electric Kettle. I chose to showcase those brew devices this go round so that I could take the opportunity to tell you all about Red Rooster's subscription service. It's Loyalty Club. Um, it's a it's called the Fix, and um, each month. Uh, it offers a taste of the most rare and delicious coffees from around the world, specially curated for you by our team of pros. And um, plus, if you choose an annual plan or a two-year plan um, as your subscription service, you uh, get free stuff uh, like the Stag EKG Kettle, the Stag XF Brewer, the Stag X Brewer, and definitely check out the subscription service if you haven't heard of it before. I mean, you get free stuff, you get really good coffee, like what's not to love, right? Um, so that's all I have for you from here. I'm just gonna zip on over to the tutorial. Um, I hope you guys enjoy. Please reach out if you have any questions regarding um, the brew or the brew device or the parameters that I used. Um, I'm happy to talk or collaborate anyway. Um, anyway, hope you guys are staying safe and I'll talk to you more soon. Um, also, one last thing. Oh, hello. Hello, baby. Go lay down. Go. Go, girl. One last thing you'll notice in this video that I am wearing gloves and a face mask. Um, Red Rooster has um, buckled down and started following all recommendations from the CDC and the World Health Organization. So, sorry about the distraction, not sorry for being safe. Anyway, enjoy. The coffee I am using is from farmers Jose Luis and Rosario, owners of Finca El Taiwan in Nicaragua. It's a washed coffee with notes of Bartlett pear, almond, and honey. Shout out to Gold Mountain Coffee Growers for sourcing this one for us. I'm weighing out 24 grams and I'm going to brew using 360 milliliters of water. I'm grinding on a medium grind size and I'll show you what those particle sizes look like in just a second. I'm heating my water up in the EKG electric kettle to 200 degrees. The decanter is double walled to hold heat longer and you'll notice the brewer's taller column and filters are going to give you more room to fill up the brewer, which is going to combine the ease of an immersion brew, but the quality of a pour over. So I'm going to start by pre-wetting my filter to heat up the dripper and the decanter. I'm also trying to avoid that papery taste from the filter as well. Now do not forget to discard the water y'all or your brew is going to taste a little funky. And here's a closer look at my grinds. This is the consistency you're going to be looking for in these particles. Also, food for thought, if you do not have a burr grinder at home, I highly recommend them. You get a really nice consistent grind size. Okay, and I'm just going to use the funnel that comes with this brewer to add my grinds in. Once I've added them in, I'm going to level the bed just by removing the funnel and shaking the brewer back and forth for just a second. I am going to start my brew with a 30 second bloom with 50 milliliters of water. So I've already zeroed out my scale and I have zeroed out my timer. I want to incorporate that first 50 milliliters pretty quickly. As you can see, we've got some nice bloom bowls happen in there. You don't want to spend a lot of time pouring your water into your first initial bloom. Get it in pretty quickly. Okay, 
My second pour, I'm going to pour to 180 milliliters. I wanna see the water level bed pretty high at this point. I'm going to wait a few seconds and start my third pour, working to keep the water level bed about three quarters from the bottom of the brew bed. It's really important to be paying attention to your water level within your brew versus the time on your scale or your timer. While it's important, it's not as important as how high or how much water you have in your brewer. One more thing I'm going to do with this brew is I'm going to softly agitate my grinds to make sure that they are fully saturated. This isn't normally an issue with flat bottom brew devices, but because this brewer is much longer and more narrow, I am going to do just a quick back and forth motion to create some turbulence. And for my final three pours, I'm gonna take it to 250, 300, and a final 360 mils, making sure the water level stays fairly high. If anyone's wondering about this music that's playing in the background, that's my buddy and my coworker, Zach Wiley. Um, if you don't know his music, you should definitely check it out. So shout out to Zach. When my brew has uh, finally finished, I'm going to remove the upper column and set it to the side. You'll notice the nice and even brew bed, which is something you want to look for when brewing. Uh, but stay tuned for another video coming soon. We'll talk more about uneven brew beds, um, uneven channeling issues, and high and dry grinds. For now, let's just evaluate the aroma together <laughs> and serve it up. By the way, your brew should take about three and a half minutes to finish. The Stag FX brewer is um, meant for two people. So lucky you, get some coffee. One for you, one for me, a little more for me, a little more for you. Mm, nope, sorry, <laughs> here you go. Enjoy. And cheers. And that's it, y'all. The fellow stag XF pour over. Reach out if you have any questions. Thanks so much for joining me.